Isaac Newton, a brilliant man known to many people this day. Born in the 1600s in England, Newton rose to be one of the most influential scientists who ever lived. He laid the groundworks for many beginning mechanics and was a mathematician, astronomer, philosopher, and more. Nowadays, he is mainly known for his theory of gravitation and his three laws of motion. These three laws will be discussed throughout the course of this documentary. Isaac Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest, or at motion, will stay in rest or in motion unless an outside force acts upon it. As an example of this law, let's look at this soccer ball. At the moment, it's at rest. In other words, it's not moving. According, according to Newton's first law of motion, this ball should stay here forever unless someone comes by to uh, apply a force. Now, this force could be someone picking up the ball, uh, and an object colliding with this ball, or someone kicking it. So, according to this law, once the soccer ball gets in motion, it's going to stay in motion unless stopped by a force. So, as we can see, that soccer ball stopped after moving for some time. So, we should ask ourselves, what forces stopped it? A few of the forces that stopped the soccer ball from moving forward constantly was, number one, there was air resistance, which would push back at the ball in whichever direction it was going at. The second one is gravity, which brings the soccer ball down to the ground. Now, the third, once the soccer ball reaches the ground, it's going to collide with the ground and causing friction, which will also slow down the ball. Some forces only slow down the object's motion instead of completely stopping it. For instance, if I were to hit this golf ball inside my house and it collided with a window or some other fragile object, that object will probably break and the golf ball would continue in its path by a bit slower. Due to the fact that I can't hit golf balls inside my house, I decided not to. In space, there are not a whole lot of outside forces to prohibit the movements of objects. So if you were to hit a baseball in the middle of space, you would have just about a perfect chance of getting a home run. It would go on forever, unless it hits a planet, comet, or some other object, which isn't very likely, since there's not a whole lot of them. Newton's law states that an object will stay in motion unless a force acts upon it. In space, there's not a whole lot of forces to act upon it. There's no friction, there's no gravity, and there's no air resistance, so in theory, the baseball would go on forever. It's useful to know when sending a rocket into space, because you only need to supply enough fuel to get the rocket to the needed speed. Once it gets going, you can turn off the engine, and it'll keep on going. Isaac Newton's second law of motion states that the amount of acceleration a force can produce on an object depends directly upon the mass of the object being accelerated. Another way to say this law, since it's a bit confusing, is by force equals mass times acceleration. That's an equation, so it's a bit easier to work with. Now you can say that in this law, if you want to if you want to increase the force of an object, what you have to do is either increase the acceleration or the mass of the object. This also applies if you want to decrease the object's force. What you would have to do though, instead, would be to decrease either the mass or the acceleration, or both. For instance, let's say I want to play golf in my backyard. That's good, except for the fact that if I used a normal golf ball, it might go too far and I'd either A, lose the ball, and or B, it might collide with um, an object that I would not like to hit. So, instead what I do is I decrease the mass and use a more lighter ball. Because the object has less mass, if I hit it with the same force as a normal golf ball, then it would have a lot less acceleration, meaning that it'll have less distance. Result, the ball won't go as far. This law 
destroyed the reason why guns and other such projectiles hit objects with such great force. Although they have little mass, because if they have great acceleration, their force will be great too. Objects that have a lot more mass need a lot more force to push, such as this wheelbarrow full of rocks, and will probably result in a little bit less acceleration. However, if I were to push an object with less mass, such as this, you take a lot less force to push. According to this law, objects with less mass um, take little, littler force to stop. So, if I were to drive my remote control car into my garage, then it should be stuck. It takes a lot more force to stop a more massive object. So, if I were to drive a car into my garage door, then my garage door might not be able to stop it. Now this brings us to Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now this is a law of motion, so this doesn't apply to other actions. If I were to give my brother a dollar, he's not going to give it back to me. So, no, what this law is really saying, that if you hit a wall, exerting force on it, then the wall will exert an equal and opposite force back at you. So, in a way, it's hitting back at you. This is why it will hurt if you run into a wall, because the wall is exerting an equal and opposite force back at you. If this law didn't exist, people could fall through floors, they could run through walls, and other such chaotic actions which would dra dramatically change the universe of today. Another way this law is shown is in the game of ping pong. When the ping pong ball hits the table, the table exerts an equal and opposite reaction back at the ping pong ball, causing it to bounce up and over to the other side of the table. If you hit it really softly, it's not going to go very far. But if you slam it down, it's going to bounce quite a bit more. So in conclusion, I would like to state that Isaac Newton made three laws. The first one states that an object at rest or in motion will stay in rest or in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. The second law is shown in an equation that goes by force equals mass times acceleration. The third law states that for every action, there is an opposite and equal react. These laws build the foundation for all physics in such sense, although they may seem a bit basic in some places, and are used in everyday situations. Without these laws, the world would be a very